Jerthony Fistano, the internet's busiest music nerd here, and it's time for a review of the new Earth album, Primitive and Deadly. This is the latest full-length LP from Seattle-based stoner metal and rock outfit Earth. And over the years that Earth has been together, they have released and penned some of the heaviest and most influential music in the underground, ranging from doom metal to drone metal, sludge metal, psychedelic rock. If this is the first time you're hearing of them, try out records like Earth 2 or Pentastar or Hex, Bees Made Honey in the Lion's Skull. Now, the band's last few records don't really rank up there as being my favorites of theirs. Putting these albums out most definitely involved an ambitious risk, but I don't think the payout was 100%. Namely, this risk came in the form of incorporating cello into Earth's already very thick and heavy sound. And at the end of the day, I think it only served to muddy up the aesthetic they've been toying with over their past few records. Although I have heard them incorporate this cello in the live setting, and it sounded great. And on this latest record, Earth is kind of undertaking another risk by incorporating vocals into their music, something they've only done on a few other occasions, and those few other occasions <laughs> happened many years ago. So they are really dusting off the vocal aspect of this record with three tracks, three of five tracks, featuring vocals from two different singers. Mark Lanigan of Screaming Trees actually appears on two songs. And then there is Rabia Hashin Kazi, who appears on a single track as well. Now, instrumentally, Earth doesn't seem to have undergone a whole lot of change. They're still building their tracks out of these slow-mo, bright, shimmering, heavy and thick spaghetti western guitar riffs, which they honed to perfection on Bees Made Honey and the Lion's Skull, and they play these riffs over and over and over, meditatively progressing and embellishing them with each repetition. There's a lot of very slow, sparse percussion. The progressions are very subtle. The overall aesthetic is very relaxing. It's a very beautiful, vivid, serene, yet ominous sound. This is not a record you just want to play on your laptop speakers as you browse social media. This album is definitely something that you should try if you find yourself having a spare moment this year and you are a big fan of heavy or psychedelic music. And there's not really any need to go too far back into Earth's discography first because the guitars and the drums are executed just as well here as they have been on their past several releases. However, still, because of the sheer amount of similarities between this album and Earth's past several releases, I kind of feel urged to suggest maybe a revisitation of the drawing board to maybe think of ways to kind of advance the band's sound forward into the future. Because in my opinion, the cellos and the vocals are not really doing it. And I'm in no means suggesting that Dylan Carlson should undergo the same kind of personal trauma he did in the time when Earth was on hiatus in the late 90s and early 2000s to the point where the band actually got back together and started releasing new music again. But over these past few records, the few new ideas Earth has managed to stir up, for me anyway, has hardly been justification for an entire album of new material. Still, despite the lack of surprise, despite the lack of a feeling that Earth is on the cusp of delivering a, another entirely new and refreshing sound, this is still a pretty decent record. The additional guitars brought by Jody Cox and Brett Nelson really thicken some of these mixes up, bring a lot of beautiful guitar tones, and despite Dylan delivering a few pretty recycled guitar riffs here and there, namely on the track from the Zodiacal Light, there are some wonderful guitar riffs and melodies and instrumental builds on the five cuts here. I love the opening track on here, which features a lot of very slow, patient, heavy, guttural chugging. I love the hypnotic groove of this track. I love the huge rushes of vivid guitar tones. The sustain, too, on these guitars is amazing, just how they play and ring out with such clarity. And the song Even Hell Has Its Heroes is one of the better tracks on here, too, also instrumental. And it starts off a little inconspicuous for an Earth track, but as it builds, it gets heavier, 
heavier, thicker, thicker, incorporates some really epic bells, and the resulting drone is just really intoxicating. It's the tracks with vocals that I actually end up feeling a, a little disappointed with. Certainly none of these songs are awful, none of the songs are outrightly ruined by any of these vocals, and instrumentally these are very coherent and methodically played and performed and very precise tracks for Earth. Again, they're beautiful. It's the vocal tracks that I feel a little disappointed with at the end of the day, and it's because of the vocals. Now, they're not terrible, they don't ruin these tracks outright, and instrumentally, Earth is sounding as good as they have on previous songs. And I don't even really disagree with their choices of, of vocalists on these tracks. Mark Lanigan, considering his musical background and where he comes from geographically, it only kind of makes sense that him and Earth might share some fans and would probably make for a pretty successful collaboration. I don't really think this collaboration failed because of a lack of talent or anything like that, but uh, as hard as Mark and Dylan tried, I think Mark has been kind of given the impossible task of singing over an Earth song. With the incredibly slow pacing of the track, Mark kind of feels like he's left out there in the open, unprotected, unsupported. His vocals feel kind of campy and almost as if he's just wandering around this instrumental at his own leisure, not really sure of what direction to go, how long to sustain notes. It's almost as if he's singing with the inflection and with the tempo that he normally would over a backing band that were playing at a normal speed. I think it just all has to do with the pacing that Earth plays its music with. It doesn't really matter how Mark sings, it's all really just going to come out sounding like miscalculated, unkempt spoken word. And I think this feeling also comes through on the closing track here, where Mark also sings, but maybe not to as strong a degree. But the song that Rabia is on, I actually don't mind her vocals on this track. The singing style that she is bringing to the table totally fits the bill for Earth's music. She's singing these very long, extended notes in this sort of way that makes her sound like a mystical desert siren. It totally complements Earth's style, even if I'm not totally in love with every moment of her performance. And that's pretty much it for this record. I mean, a relatively short and concise record from Earth on this one. Just five tracks, two instrumentals, three vocals. All good performances for the most part. Instrumentally, again, I like this. I'm satisfied with this. And I'm going to look forward to their next project and just kind of cross my fingers hoping for a bit more progression into the future. I'm feeling a strong six to a light seven on this thing. Transition, but if you've given this record a listen, what did you think of it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Why? What do you think I should review next? And that's it. Anthony Fantano, Earth, forever.